Imagination or illusion? This is the question I think that is really awesome to ask when we're in Mercury retrograde moments, when we're in eclipse season moments. Because I think that, you know, for, for me, for example, when it's Mercury retrograde season and eclipse season, I notice that I get all these like really strong creative impulses that I feel like I have to act on immediately. And actually, those creative impulses might be coming in for me to <laughs> just ground and land into them a little bit and not really act on them immediately. I have to laugh at myself a little bit here because I'm saying this to you, but it's also something that I really have to put into practice for myself and remind myself to do. Just because it comes in doesn't mean I need to act on it right away. I think that imagination is incredibly important for us. You know, we have this beautiful quote that has been given to us from William Blake, imagination is eternity. And I think that that is so incredibly true. Imagination is eternity. And you know, when we start out on a spiritual path and we get really clear insights about different things in our lives, one of the very first things that a lot of us more skeptical, pragmatic folks do is begin to doubt ourselves. Is this real? Am I just making this all up? And I wonder if we get into a place of presence where maybe it doesn't matter so much if it's real or imagined. Maybe reality and imagination or the imaginal realm is actually occurring all at the same time and all within the cusp of the present moment. I really feel as though it's there's something about imagination that comes with non-attachment. There's something about imagination where we just allow ourselves to experience it, like we have the invitation to experience the present moment. And I feel that imagination is one of the great gifts of being human and being here at this time. And denying ourselves that gift and only having the faith and trust in what we can see and touch and hear, I think robs us of a very natural gift of what it means to be a sentient being at this time. And I think imagination also is like a spark of inspiration. When you hang out with the most inspired of our population, the children, you notice that they're very easily in that place of imagination, imaginal play, imaginal storytelling, imaginal art creation, imaginal song creation. And that's a very natural and beautiful place to be. I wonder why as we get older, we become so calloused that we have to, or we believe that we have to deny ourselves of that experience. I think it could be really profound and amazing if we were able to allow ourselves to stay in that imaginal space. But how do we know the difference between imagination and illusion? I think that imagination comes with that presence, right? Like, you know, when a, when a child is done playing, they leave behind the imagination and they go into the next thing, right? Illusion, there's a stickiness to illusion. And illusion, a lot of times, is wrought with tethers either to the past or to the future. If illusion is bringing a stickiness toward the past, perhaps it's also coming in with a very strong sense of victim consciousness or scarcity consciousness. If it's too attached to the future, perhaps it's coming in with a really strong sense of anxiousness and and needing to prove who we are, who what we identify with, 
in one way or another. So others will perceive us in one specific way. I actually think that the moment that we adhere to any one specific way of identifying ourselves, we immediately come into a place of illusion, actually. And, you know, now there's so much focus on identifying ourselves. You know, what's your image? What's your brand? What do you want to be defined as? What do you believe in? What do you adhere to? Identify yourself, identify yourself, identify yourself. And I think that that need to constantly identify ourselves does push us more and more into a place of illusion and therefore also separation. And when we are more separate, we are just very susceptible to, you know, not, not feeling worthy, not feeling enough. We're, and we become very susceptible to being controlled. What's worse is that the more we adhere to illusions of our identity or illusions that we feel we have to believe in in any regard, in the past or in the future, we can really begin to come into a strong place of judgment of ourselves, of others. And I think illusions will always bring us into traps, you know? and. There's a lot of traps out there for us. There's a lot of traps out there for us. You watch, you look close, you'll see them. You'll see that there's a lot of traps out there. So my sense is that imagination is that initial spark of inspiration. And it's a place that we can visit and allow ourselves to experience, just like presence is. And the more that we actually allow ourselves to be in an experienced presence, the more we are able to come and go from that place of imagination. So I want to encourage you to be really aware of illusions you carry. Even if the illusion is telling you that you're like, the incarnation of some great being or something like that, right? That's still in, in adhering to the past. So I want to I encourage you to be aware of illusions that you carry because this keeps you really separate from experiencing the absolute bliss that is available to you within the energy of your own imagination. <laughs>